Hi folks, this is Karim Rao from RTV's Verizon ch uh, channel. Today we'll continue our lab, the COVID-19 lab. This is the video number uh, 12. We've been discussing in the previous video the following. Uh, we have discussed what is uh, or we have uh, installed the HSP and file server role and we have discussed what is a DHSP or what is the concept of DHSP uh, and we said that it is uh, a centralized location that distributes IP addresses uh, to the machines in the domain and that we said uh, we have said that the ma it for every machine to talk to another machine that it is connected to it through network cables or through network the machine need to have an IP address okay so the DHCP distributes IP addresses automatically to the machines and it distributes the domain controller IP address and the DNS IP address and the winds IP address and uh, the default gateway so the workstations or the PCs can get out to the internet and then we have discussed what is the file server role it is also a centralized location or let's consider consider it an advanced storage uh, unit okay uh, or a centralized location uh, that act acting as a storage unit and we let all of our users put their uh, important data on this centralized location or on this storage unit and we can control from this storage unit uh, uh, what type of data to be put so you can uh, define what file extensions you need to be put on the server so for example you don't need to put movies or uh, sound uh, clips on the file server and we can make quota so we can define how much data to be put on this storage unit okay so this is simply what is a file server role okay and you have said that there is a lot of benefits to centralize the storage of our important data so why don't every user put his important data on his pc because his pc uh, storage uh, uh, hard disk or storage unit it's not as much or it's not the capacity of the hard disk of the normal PC is not as the capacity of the hard disk of the server okay or the capacity of the storage unit of the server okay and uh, if a virus infected the PC all of the data will be uh, infected and he will lose all, 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 all of his data but if his data is on a centralized location you can take a backup of this uh, data and you can uh, and you have a larger storage so you can put more data and you can uh, uh, protect it by putting strong antivirus and so on so so there is a lot of benefits for uh, centralizing the storage of our important data okay and then we have configured the DHCP or the first thing after installing the server role you need to authorize the DHCP so you need to tell or you need to give the DHCP a permission and tell him that you are the only authorized uh, p uh, server to give IP addresses to the machines so this is what we mean by authorization okay so it's an authorized DHCP so if you not authorize the DHCP to give IP addresses it will not give IP addresses to the machine so it's something like a permission that you give to the DHCP server to uh, begin distributing IP addresses to the machines okay and we have said it's not only IP addresses but you uh, distribute the IP address of the domain controller the DNS the winds and the gateway and then we begin configuring something called IP address scope it is or we define uh, what is the range of IP addresses that we, we that we will distribute or what is the starting IP address and what is the ending IP address that we will uh, distribute or the range of IP addresses that we, we will distribute and then uh, we configure the DHCP also or give it the IP address of our domain controller and the IP address of our DNS and the IP address of our winds and the IP address of our gateway and let it distribute it to the workstation so you authorize the DHCP and then you configure the IP scope and then you provide the IP address of the DNS and the winds and the gateway so it after the DHCP is up and running it will distribute all of this information and then we have begin implementing PowerShell scripts to create department folders that we said before we have a file server and then we will make it as a centralized storage location so we will create folder for every department uh, and then we will share this uh, folders so the users can uh, uh, see it and access it and then we will give permissions on this shared folder so uh, not all folders can be accessed by all users 
okay we will specify certain users to access certain shared folders okay so all of this will be done using scripts so we will create a script or we will run a script to create department folders on the file server and then we will use another script to uh, share the folders okay and then so the users can access it or uh, you can the users can reach it and then we'll begin putting certain permissions on the folder so for example if we make a folder for the accounting team we will restrict that only the ac active directory group of the accounting members or only the active directory uh, accounting group will be access uh, will be able to access uh, the uh, folder of the accounting on the file server which is shared and we will define through these permissions what they can do with the folder and its content so for example we can let the accounting active directory group to change the files to change the folders to delete the files uh, to make new files inside the folder so uh, this is the permission so for example i can give the accounting team full permission on the folder and for example as for the hr team on their shared folder i can give them read only permission on the folder so they can read what is inside the folder but they can't change or do anything else so this is the permissions okay so we'll put smb share permissions this is the permissions number one and then we will make a powershell script to add a second type of permissions which is called ntfs permissions so we put two permissions on the shared folders for more security layers so we not only put one type of permissions but we put two types of permissions so we have an advanced security layer or we have more security on our folders so we have created uh, a script to create the folders a script to share the folders a script to put SMB share permissions and then a script to, boss, uh, to put NTFS share permissions okay and then at the end uh, we have created our department folders and we share them and we have our permissions ready we need these folders or the shared folders uh, to be uh, accessible by the user so we need to give the user the location of this shared folder so in the normal way we need to give the user the name of the server then the name of the folder okay that it is shared so we give him a long uh, url or, or a long uh, typing so we need to give him the name of the server then we need to tell him that if you need to access your folder you need to type the server name and then the folder of your department so this is very long or it is not an easy way to uh, to make the user access his folder so we'll make something called network map drives the user need only to to log in with his active directory user account and then he will see his department folder okay so he will see it automatically we will do this through something called network mapped drive group policy okay we have discussed this also and then we have a partial script uh, that will create so after finishing all of the department shares and mapping them we will use a partial script to create something called active directory home folders these are personal folders on the file server so we put for every active directory user a folder on the file server to put his personal data on it and he will be the only one uh, that he can access his folder and uh, he will be the only one that can see his folder so an active directory user like Karim cannot see cannot see the active directory home folder of a user called Ahmed so everyone will see his folder ev and everyone will have full control over his folder okay so this is it and then we have enabled on the department shared folders and the active directory home folders something called access based enumeration this is an option in the shared folders when you share a folder this option is uh, introduced what we mean by this access based enumeration help you uh, to hide any folder that the user doesn't have at least read permission on it so for example if you have uh, four or five folders and they are shared okay and one of the users or for example we have a accounting uh, shared folder the HR shared folder the IT shared folder so for example if I am an HR member I can see only my shared folder of the HR but as for the IT and as for the accounting shared folders they will be hidden from my site so it will not be available for the user even if he type the name of the server he will not be able 
uh, to access these folders and will be hidden from his view because he doesn't have at least read permission on my folder as IT or on the accounting folder so this is done and we have configured mapping group policy as I said before to map uh, department shares so the uh, department shares will appear as a drive something like a local drive but it is called network lo uh, network drive something as if you are accessing your D partition or F partition or something and then we have taken a snapshot from the machine as a backup before beginning installing the WSOS role and we have discussed before a WSOS role in a previous video it is a centralized location it is responsible for downloading the different updates for the different operating systems uh, in your domain and then he distribute it to the servers and the workstations okay so for, for example if you have uh, a lot of PCs having Windows 10 installed on them and a lot of PCs having Windows 7 installed on them and a lot of servers that have Windows Server 2016 installed on them the WSOS goes to the Microsoft website and download all of the updates for these different operating systems and he distribute it to them okay uh, the normal way that every workstation or every server goes to the Microsoft uh, website directly and download the updates by itself but this is a consumption of uh, bandwidth and a lot of things it's not secure and it's, it's I mean it's not secure it's not controllable so we can control or in a domain you need to control what type of uh, uh, updates are installed on your workstations and servers because sometimes some updates are not working perfectly so you need to test the updates before pushing it to the uh, machines in your domain so we will discuss in this uh, video how we can install the WSOS and how we can uh, make a policy or we make a standard for working with WSOS so we need to have a standard or a way to deal with the updates so it will not only be something like uh, making the WSOS download the updates and then push them to the clients no we will have a standard and a policy to do this we need to download the update first and then uh, group our uh, computers according to their role so for example we group all of the workstations in a folder and then we group all of our servers in a folder and then we will make a folder called test so we will test our updates on the test folder which will contain uh, uh, test uh, workstations and uh, PCs so we can test the uh, updates on a limited number of workstations before pushing them uh, to all of the workstations in our domain I will show you all when it comes but this is a brief about what we will do so let's begin here is our uh, lab let's begin and see how this will be done so here we will go and open our works VM workstation pro and then we will begin uh, installing the WSOS server role so here we have our domain controller our primary domain controller and our secondary domain controller which will act as uh, WSOS okay and we will need to increase the RAM a little bit because the WSOS takes a lot from the RAM so we need to uh, decrease the RAM here I have decreased my primary domain controller RAM to make it 1 giga and in then increase my additional domain controller virtual machine to be 3 giga okay because I have a limited number of uh, RAM so uh, I cannot leave it uh, uh, th 2 gigabyte and then 3 gigabyte I will be left with 3 gigabyte only of uh, of RAM to use it to my laptop okay so here I am opening my additional domain controller and then here we need to open open our uh, additional domain controller and will access it with my domain admin account but I have forgot to do something I need to uh, add an additional hard disk to this uh, additional domain controller because we all know that the WSOS will download a lot of updates so this needs to have a hard disk with uh, a large free space so I need to add an additional hard disk and I will allocate it to the WSOS updates uh, as a whole okay so we'll see this how we can add an additional hard disk and uh, allocate it to the WSOS so let's see how this is done here we can see that it says that there is some updates this is because the server went to the Microsoft uh, 
Microsoft uh, website directly and get the updates. This we don't need to do this. We need it to communicate with the WSOS to get its update. After installing this, we will see that it will go to the WSOS, which is itself to get the updates. Here we can see that our uh, Active Directory home folder, this is the Active Directory home folder, it's called L, as I have said before, and this is named according to my username, and this is the IT uh, department folder, and it is shared as an M drive, and it is called Neuralink, okay? So this is the IT, and there is the quota, and the other one also have a quota. So here I am limited to two gigabyte, as for this it is five gigabyte, okay? So this is, that means that our, uh, uh, mapping group policy for the department shares is working and the mapping of the uh, Active Directory Home folder is done successfully. So now we need to uh, uh, go to the uh, server manager and add the WSOS server, uh, server role but before that I just uh, forgot we need to close uh, the additional domain controller or power off this machine and add an additional hard disk so we need to do this because uh, we will not put uh, the WSOS updates on our current hard disk because it doesn't contain uh, uh, enough uh, enough space so we will shut down the virtual machine and then we will go and edit the virtual machine setting and add an additional hard disk okay So here it, it will removable and then it tells me to take a snapshot or revert snapshot or just power off we will just power off and then edit our virtual machine setting and then we will go and tell him hard disk and add an additional hard disk okay another hard disk okay which will be uh, 100 gigabyte so we have enough space it's type NVMe uh, type of the hard disk and create a virtual disk and then we will make it 100 gigabyte and we will split it to multiple files okay next and then it is uh, best practice or it is recommended to save your additional hard disk to the folder that contains the virtual machine itself okay so here I will go to my folder that contains my virtual machine it is in the D this is my laptop uh, partition D and then I will go to Kareem this is the folder and then documents and then virtual machines and then I put my additional hard disk to my uh, additional domain controller virtual machine folder okay so here it is and then finish and then okay and then we will power again on the virtual machine and then uh, we need to uh, initialize the hard disk so the hard disk it is still it is attached to the virtual machine but we need to make the windows see it so we need to initialize it and then we need to partition it we will make it one partition and we will name it E drive okay and then we will uh, tell the WSOS to put its uh, updates or download its updates in this newly created uh, hard disk okay so here it is scale off this is the username and then we'll put the password So now we need to op open the server manager and then add uh, server role or feature. So you can see a lot of uh, warnings. You will clear all of the notifications and then. I need to go to the computer or disk management we need to initialize the hard disk or make the windows see the hard disk by initializing it so we initialize it disk one here you see it as uh, an, an unallocated uh, space so here we will make it gpt the default one okay and then it is disk one and tell him initialize and tell him okay and then we will make one partition okay which will be our e partition okay I need uh, 
I like to have uh, everything in order so I need my system partition to be C and my second partition that I put that on it will be D and then the third will be E okay so here we can see that the CD-ROM is taking the E uh, letter so I will change it and make it F okay so I will change it and make my CD-ROM take the drive letter F okay I need everything to be in order so I need all of the partitions to be in alphabetical order so here I will uh, make a new simple volume and then next and then we'll take all of the space and we we'll assign E and then we will format it as NTFS and then we name this partition WSOS so we can know that this partition is allocated for the WSOS okay and then we will copy the name because when we begin configuring WSOS it will ask us where to save the updates of Microsoft so we will create a folder on our newly created partition and name it WSOS and let the WSOS uh, server uh, download its update in this folder so we will go to the newly created partition which is the WSOS and then we will make a folder and we will name it WSOS and when we, when we configure the WSOS we will tell it to put the updates in this folder okay then we'll open the server manager so we are just uh, emptying my recycle bin and then in, in uh, an upcoming video we'll begin working with the Windows Admin Center because it's a very good tool that through it you can control your remote computers or servers and see a lot of uh, useful information or data So here we're still waiting to see uh, or for the dashboard to complete loading and then we can see in the dashboard that the Winds server is not running so we will start the Winds service so the Winds server will begin working and then we tell him manage and add roles and features and then next 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 and then we will add something called Windows Server Update Services which is briefly or it is named as WSOS okay the next next and then this is uh, let me uh, go a little bit further here we need to discuss something here so we go to the Windows Server Update Service this is something and we need to discuss uh, another thing what is Okay, he tells here you that uh, the WSOS will not only uh, save the updates, just a moment. So the WSOS will not only save the updates to a folder, but it also saves uh, a lot of data concerning these updates. Okay, so there is a lot of data concerning the name of the updates, their uh, release date, uh, how much uh, computers that have downloaded these updates how much computers in your domain all of this data will be stored in a database so the WSOS is uh, considered or consists of two things uh, a folder that will uh, uh, through it uh, the WSOS will put all of the updates from the Microsoft website and then a database that records all of the activity related to distributing and installing and uh, running these updates so we have a database that will contain all of the information we need about the updates the release date how much computers that have downloaded these updates how much computers that didn't download these updates and a lot of useful information so this data is uh, is two types so you have a WSOS uh, database uh, two types one is called Windows internal database and the other one is SQL database so you can make a WSOS database using a type of database called Windows internal database uh, this is a kind of database that is small you only uh, uh, need it uh, for a small environment for example something like 70 or 80 or 100 PCs okay this database only uh, limit to one tera I think or something so 
you can use it in a small environment but what if you have a large environment so you can make the WSOS uh, make or work with database SQL database but for our environment we will use WID which calls Windows internal database so we will use it and we use WSOS services so he is installing and Windows internal database to put the WSOS data in it and he will install some services related to the WSOS to work perfectly so these are the two but what if you don't need the Windows internal database you can work with the SQL server so you will install the SQL server and then uh, or make this option and then install a SQL database and tell the WSOS or, or create on your SQL database a database for the WSOS and uh, connect it to the, w, the WSOS server okay this is a long step but I have discussed it in my transformers lab and how we can change from Windows internal database to SQL database this is uh, some steps I have discussed in the transformers lab if you need to see it but we will uh, accept the default setting okay so we will go there and next and then here is asking for the folder that it will store the updates in it so we'll tell him E and then WSOS and then tell him next and then we will wait uh, until he installs all of the WSOS components okay so we'll tell him install then we will wait until the installation is finished now we tell him launch post installation task it will take some time to configure some uh, things related to the WSOS and at the end it will tell you that the update or the configuration is finished after that we will add the WSOS console to our uh, custom console and begin working with the WSOS we will make some initial configurations uh, or initial configuration to the WSOS he is telling us that the configuration successfully completed we will go and open our uh, custom console and then begin configuring some uh, uh, options related to the WSOS okay so it will take a little bit of time here we will tell him file and add snapping and then begin adding the WSOS console to our custom console as we see here this is very useful to have a custom console to contain all of your uh, tools important tools in one place okay so this is a good uh, or it is the best practice for system admins and then we will add the uh, update services it's not named WSOS it, it is named update services and then here we can see that this is the initial configuration he was telling us some before you begin is the server firewall configured to allow clients to access the server so is your firewall on the server allowing clients or workstations to communicate with the server so you need to be very careful if your firewall is blocking uh, normal workstations to communicate with the server this is something you need to take care can this computer connect to the upstream server so can your server uh, go and communicate with the Microsoft website so this basically asking if you have an internet connection so you can download updates from the Microsoft website do you have user credentials for the proxy server if needed so here is telling you are you connected to the internet directly without any medium or without any uh, uh, something between something like a proxy server a proxy server it is basically uh, a server that controls uh, what the user can see on the internet and what he can see something like filtering okay the connection between the user or the PC and the internet so he is telling you if you have a proxy server please provide the credentials because you need to allow the WSOS to pass the proxy server okay to get the updates but in our situation we don't have a proxy server we have an internet connection we are have disabled the firewall on our server so we don't need to worry about the three uh, things but you need to take into consideration the three important questions okay so here we will continue and then it is a license agreement and then he's saying that we need to uh, we get a little bit here further we need to just a moment so again let's show uh, the other thing so if this is the license agreement we will continue 
and then this is synchronized from Microsoft updates or the Microsoft website or if you have another so let's consider that you don't have an internet on this server but you have another WSOS server that has an internet connection so uh, this server doesn't have an uh, an internet connection but there is another WSOS that has uh, an internet connection so you can make this WSOS takes its update from the WSOS server that have an internet connection so you have a WSOS or a primary WSOS and this will be a secondary WSOS but it is taking its update from the primary WSOS so this is a good practice if you don't have internet connection here you have only network connection or you don't or, or you are blocking internet on this server but there is another server acting as a WSOS and there is internet connection on it so we can use the second option okay but here I have uh, internet access so I will tell him to synchronize from Microsoft and then we don't have a proxy server so we will, we will uh, ignore it and then we'll, he will make uh, an initial uh, start connecting with the Microsoft website so it will take a little bit of time then it have connected to Microsoft website and then he is telling you what is the language that you need uh, the updates to be uh, downloaded with so all of the, the updates will be loaded with the English language uh, term okay or it will be in English language okay so you can decide which uh, what the updates language will be uh, downloaded so here is this one and then he will specify or you need to specify which products of Microsoft you need to download the updates so you can download updates for Windows you can download updates for Office you can download any updates for any Microsoft website through this list so you can specify I need for, for example to uh, download updates for Office 2019 because we will install it and we need uh, uh, Windows 10 updates okay and we need Windows Server 2019 updates for the servers and we need uh, Microsoft Age updates all of this also can be taken from the Microsoft website and we need the uh, Windows Defender here uh, actually I will not use an antivirus I will leave the antivirus for the default uh, antivirus installed on the uh, Windows which is Windows Defender so we will download Windows Defender updates from the Microsoft website so there is a lot of things to be done here on all products you need to choose what kind of updates that you yeah, that you what kind of updates for what kind of products that you need uh, to download from the Microsoft website so this is need to be very careful so here I am choosing the updates that I need here we will choose Office 2019 and Office 2016 okay and then we will uh, decide that we need Windows 10 updates so this is also something here we need to choose here we will just uncheck all of the Windows components and then we will begin choosing specific uh, kind of updates Windows 10 for example I think it's uh, version 19.03 this is the, the latest one that when I was recording the video but I think it's uh, no there was 2004 but uh, actually I'm saying to him download updates uh, beginning from version 19.03 and later so he will download all of the updates from this version uh, and up okay so here we tell him Windows 10 version 193 and later so he will download the updates for Windows uh, 10 2004 so you have chosen this and then we will uh, choose Windows Server 2019 actually I didn't find here uh, the product of Windows Server uh, 2022 because it is still a preview uh, edition so you will not find updates on, uh, for it on the Microsoft website okay you will find it but uh, not in, in, uh, in uh, an official away okay so anyway here uh, we have chosen some uh, Microsoft products but still we need here Windows Server version 1903 or later and then we will choose uh, uh, Microsoft Edge and then Microsoft uh, Windows Defender and then we will choose a couple of things so now we will begin uh, adding couple of products okay 
so here we will choose uh, for example uh, the Windows or Microsoft Edge okay so we can get updates for Microsoft Edge from the Microsoft website so here we can see let's here I am uh, getting them one by one so here we see a lot of Microsoft products okay here we can see a Windows Server 2019 uh, blah 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 and here you can see that it is the pillow for run tools and distributables and then we can see something for the exchange and a lot of things uh, here we will choose uh, Microsoft uh, Windows Defender so let's wait here we will continue and then we will choose uh, we can go further because we have chosen Office 2016 and 2019 and then we will choose uh, the Windows Defender and then the Microsoft Edge so here we will continue we need Windows Admin Center so this is uh, we will install it later and I need uh, the Microsoft website or the WSOS to download the latest updates for the Windows Admin Center and I will discuss later what is in Windows Admin Center and then we need to uh, have Microsoft Defender updates or Defender Antivirus and Microsoft Edge so here we have a couple of Microsoft products that will be downloaded by, by our WSOS and then we need to go to the second step which is choose classification of updates so this is the products and we we will download updates for these products okay the, the updates for these products are classified to a couple of classifications we will uh, discuss when it comes in a second what is this classifications of these updates so the updates for these products are categorized to three or four categories okay we will discuss one by one just a moment guys so let's continue guys here we said before that the updates uh, the, the WSOS classify the Windows updates or the updates that it downloads from Microsoft to a couple of uh, categories for example we here we can see that there is something called critical updates definition updates security updates upgrade this is the most or the most four important classifications of updates critical updates means that these updates should be installed immediately without delay so this is maybe security uh, fixes or security bugs that are fixed a critical system uh, failure uh, things for example if there is a feature in the Microsoft Windows that it is failing and it is critical and it is damaging the environment so all of these critical updates or all of these are contained in the critical updates category and then we have definition updates this is for the antivirus for mainly for the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the defender so all of these updates are uh, categorized as definition updates these are updates for the antivirus and then we have something called security updates these are like critical updates but it is related to security so sometimes the critical updates are related to security and non-security issues okay something like uh, a feature failing in Microsoft so uh, it is making a lot of damage so this will be done in or put in critical updates and then we have security updates this is related to security bugs related to the Windows operating system or any other uh, Microsoft product so uh, as a best practice you need to install the critical updates and the security updates immediately without delay okay as for the definition updates also if, if it's related to the antivirus it did also need to be updated regularly and there is upgrades upgrades this is upgrade for Windows or something but uh, it can stay or it you can delay the upgrade a little bit until it is fully tested the upgrades for Microsoft but these are the most important for critical or categor categorization of updates and we will choose tools because there is some tools Microsoft download for its products so uh, we can choose this also okay so this is the most important uh, categorization of uh, updates so we need only to install the critical updates the definition updates and the security updates and we will make uh, a process because sometimes the critical updates here we can see that we need to go uh, a little bit further here we will choose tools okay and then 
uh, the other one here you can see that you can make the WSOS uh, communicate with the Microsoft website and get the updates manually so you can uh, trigger the WSOS to get the updates manually or it can be done automatically it is best practice to make it at midnight when there is no internet consumption and when the users are at home so you can download the updates freely uh, without any interruption and without someone uh, uh, complaining from the mic uh, complaining from the internet uh, slowness or something so and we can make it how much you can make it one per day so you can make it at midnight uh, this is the much, much better or this is uh, one of the uh, uh, standards we done uh, you can make it once at midnight so this is uh, also preferable in a production environment so then we will begin tell him next I will not begin uh, s thinking now with the Microsoft website so we'll tell him finish and then OK and then we need to see the uh, structure of the WSOS here we can see that it is categorized to two parts one the updates and one the computers the updates will contain the categorization that we have set the critical updates the security updates and so it will be categorized like this so there is one for critical updates one for security updates and one for definition updates and one for all updates or something these are the categorization of the updates and it will be listed here as for the computers uh, what is the process the process that uh, when the computers communicate with the WSOS to get their updates uh, the WSOS register them in the container called computers under something called unassigned computers okay in this here so the WSOS knows uh, the workstations or the PCs that need updates and register them in this container so by default if we open it we will see that it will contain all computers and then unassigned computers here we need to uh, make new categori categorization for computers here we will create three categorization first one for the servers we will contain all of the servers in one container and then we'll make another uh, categorization called computers we will contain all of the workstations in it and then we'll make a third one called test test this uh, categorization we will have a couple of PCs and the server as a test so this group we will assign to it certain updates so uh, after doing the categorization let me show you all how, what I mean by this so we'll make a computer group so it is servers okay and then we will make something called computers and then okay computers and then we will make something called test so here we will contain in this test we will contain a couple of PCs in, in it so we will register some PCs in this container and then we will inform the WSOS to install the newly discovered updates to this test group okay so we test the different updates downloaded from uh, by the WSOS from the Microsoft web website to certain or limited number of computers so this is a good way for categorization of computers we can categorize the computers or uh, uh, what updates to be installed to what computers and we have also the updates categorized so we cannot or we can download certain type of updates to certain types of computers so this is a best practice to have updates categorized and the computers categorized we will see that in a moment or in the upcoming videos so let's continue and then uh, we need to if you remember in one of the videos I said that for the workstations and the PCs to know that they need to communicate with the WSOS server which which name is so and so and its IP and is so and so we need to configure a group policy and push it to the servers and the workstations and we have two WSOS group policies one for the servers and one for the workstations I have discussed before why we have two group policies one for the servers and one for the workstations so in this group policy we will inform the PCs and servers that if they need updates or system updates communicate with the WSOS server 
and do not go to the Microsoft website directly. No, communicate to the WSOS and he will give you or he will distribute you the updates. So we need to go to the group policy and configure the name of the WSOS server. We will do this now, so let's wait. We go to the group policy and then remember we have a group policy named WSOS. Okay. Here we can see that the group policy objects and then we have the WSOS group policy. So we will edit. And remember we have a couple of things also configured to the WSOS uh, group policy. The one uh, concerning the updates and how they will be dealt with. So with the workstations the updates will be installed and downloaded and the PC will be restarted automatically. As for the servers uh, the uh, updates will be downloaded only and the admin will restart the server and install the updates manually so we have discussed why we need to do this two type of uh, updates or this two type of updates configuration so here we will open the administrative templates and then windows components and then we will go to the this is from the computer configuration and then windows update So here we can see something called configure automatic updates. This is the first option. We can see here, remember that we are telling him to auto download and schedule the install. So the updates will be downloaded, installed, and the PC will be restarted automatically for the workstations. So this is the option. And then we will configure the intranet or the name of the web server or the name of the WSOS, which will be the name of the domain controller which is acting in the same time as the WSOS and then we'll put 8530 this is the port for the WSOS okay so you communicate with the server through this port dedicated to the WSOS okay so we leave everything to the default okay and then uh, you can specify an alternative download server if you have two WSOS servers so you can uh, put this as an alternative okay so here we will continue and then we will configure the group policy this is for the W this is for the workstations as for the servers we will configure a local group policy which is will be only uh, applied to the server uh, itself so a local group policy will be applied to the server itself not to all of the uh, servers in the domain so we'll specify it to be the local group policy i'll show you how we can configure the local group policy but anyway we had configured uh, the uh, uh, workstations group policy and then we need to uh, make sure okay it's not in the users setting so it's it's configured from the computer configuration and then we will go to the default domain policy there is another thing to be configured here we need here the servers will be informed by only the name of the WSOS server but not uh, the way of the updates to be dealt with okay this will be done using the local group policy so here also we have a component and then uh, Windows uh, update and then here we can see that configure automatic updates is not enabled but only the intranet Here we can see that we will inform him with the name of the new WSOS server. Apply and OK. Run. We need to. Uh, we will type gpedit.msc. This is the local group policy of the server so it's only applied to the server the difference between the active director group policy and the local group policy the active director group policy is applied to a lot of computers as for the local group policy it is only applied to the machine that contains the group policy okay so here we will configure the local group policy for the server here we will configure to auto download and notify for update this is the option that will be used for this server so we will only download updates to the server and i will install the updates and restart the server by myself as an admin ok 
okay so this is different than the workstations we have discussed this in a previous video and then we will enable the name of the server we will do this on the local group policy of the additional domain controller and the local group policy of the primary domain controller so we will do this we'll go to the primary domain controller and then we will go and add or we'll begin working with this local group policy so one, one can tell me why you don't make a group policy and apply it to the servers okay anyway you can do this actually and there is also uh, a group policy only to be applied to the domain controllers you can use this also but I am prefer to use the local group policy for each one of them okay so we can go further okay we can go like this and then you can go and begin uh, click start and run and then type gpedit.mcsc to get the local group policy for the server and configure the WSOS update policy <laughs> or start and then run and then type gpedit dot m s c and then okay then configure the w source uh, policy <laughs> and after doing all of this we will create a workstation and join it to the domain to see uh, how uh, the different uh, active directory uh, policies or group policies and Active Directory login script and the WSOS will see how this workstation will communicate to the WSOS to get its update so also we'll test it on workstation so here we will go to the computer configuration administrative templates and then go to the Windows components and then Windows update and then we will have the configure auto updates and we will leave it to the default which will be uh, auto download and in and to file for install so this is the option we'll enable it apply and ok and then we will uh, specify the WSOS name the name of the server and the port to communicate with and here we'll put the name of the server our additional domain controller name server name So we will go to the here you can see paste so we can go there and then paste here is the name and then we put again control V so here we have the name of the WSOS server running or up and ready okay and then we will begin uh, adding a new workstation so now we have done all of the configuration and then we'll create a new virtual machine and we will install windows on it and test it and see so here tell him typical and then we will insert the operating system uh, DVD later and then we will choose the operating system to be windows 10 64 bit and remember you need to make a folder for this virtual machine to be installed in so we have all of our virtual machines here if you can go here go all of my virtual machines are installed in this location okay so I'll make a folder in virtual machines with the name of the virtual machine and put all of the virtual machine in it okay so we will do this first of all I need to take a name so I will go to the active directory and see one of the computers okay that uh, it's already there so we'll go to the uh, brain and then nerve cells we all know that the nerve cells are considered in our scenario as computers so we'll take NRV CBR01 this will be our first machine that will join the domain it is done in a something called pre-staged so we have pre-staged this computer in the active directory and then we will uh, make it join the domain so here we will give it a name here we need to uh, state the type of operating system which is 
Windows 10 64 bit the image that I, I am using it's uh, Windows 10 uh, 20 H2 uh, 2004 so this is the latest one that uh, was introduced to me when or it was issued when I was working in the lab now there is 21 H2 so you can use this one okay so here we will uh, create a folder for this virtual machine so here Kareem and then uh, documents under virtual machines we will create a folder for this virtual machine and then we will install or we will make a folder and put all of the virtual machine files in it okay so now we can go and work with the machine so we put the name okay and the next and then we will assign a hard disk to it 100 gigabyte a best practice if you have a partition uh, that we will put the operating system on it, it and this operating system will be Windows 10 the, op uh, the partition that the operating system will be installed on it it should be more than 150 gigabyte this is best practice or it's recommended from Microsoft here we will give it uh, one processor because I don't have a lot of processors I have only four virtual processors so I can uh, use three virtual machines at max every one of them will have one processor and one for my laptop and then I will give uh, the memory for this virtual machine to be one gigabyte because I don't have a lot of RAM I have only eight gigabyte of RAM so I am all I am now consumed uh, three or I have four of them so I can only spare uh, another one giga so I can work with my laptop with three gigabyte of, of RAM okay so they don't have any performance issues so now we will see that we'll go to uh, no we now we will make sure first of all that uh, every uh, virtual machine is taking only one processor remember we didn't assign the network so we need to make the new virtual machine uh, uh, installed on our virtual network VMNet 8 okay so this is the network okay so we need to put it on the same network of the domain controllers so it will be able to communicate with the uh, domain controller so now we will go and change the network adapter network from NET okay we will choose it to VMNet 8 the one that we are all uh, working on okay so now we will insert the ISO image for the operating system and then we will choose the operating system ISO image which is Windows 10 20 H2 okay uh, 2004 I think this is the, the latest one yes it is uh, uh, Windows 10 20 H2 okay so now we have only uh, one gigabyte of RAM I, I cannot spare more so now we will tell him OK and then uh, power on the virtual machine and begin installation of the operating system we will partition the hard disk of this uh, virtual machine to two partitions C which will be uh, 90 gigabyte as I said before it is best practice to have the C drive for the operating system to be more than 150 and the rest will be for the D partition OK so now we'll boot from the DVD and then we will begin uh, performing the installation of the operating system so here we are just revising the setting so everything is is normal so here we need to do something we need to get the MAC address of the network card of this virtual machine so we need to take it because the DHCP will not give this uh, virtual machine an IP address unless it is in the allowed filter so we need to go to the DHCP and then in the allowed filter we need to add the MAC address of this virtual machine to the DHCP so it will allow or it will take an IP address from the DHCP without doing this step this virtual machine will not be able to take an IP address will not be able to join the domain so this is a uh, very important uh, step after allowing the allow and deny filter so here is the MAC address we need to take care that there is no semicolon or there is no commas or semicolon or uh, dots we need to change it to dash okay as we see here 
and then we will type the name of the virtual machine okay so we know that this machine it is the one that we are uh, currently working on so here is nrvcbr01 and then after adding it to the DHCP it will be allowed to get an IP address okay okay and then we will go to the virtual machine and begin the installation of the windows okay so now this is English United States and then we will begin the normal process of the installation tell him next and then install and then uh, a custom installation or uh, or uh, 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 accept the license agreement and then we will choose the operating system there is a lot of operating systems we will install Windows 10 Enterprise which is the most or uh, the highest uh, 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 let's say the highest operating system it contains all of the features for Microsoft and it is custom for enterprises and companies so you will use Windows 10 Enterprise okay so before it is best practice of my uh, 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 expertise there is a Windows 10 uh, system called Windows 10 Enterprise LTSC it is a very good uh, 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 system I will say now what is the benefits but here first we will allocate the hard disk we will give it uh, as I said before the C partition should be 150 but we don't have uh, a lot of space so we will make it 90 and then we will have the second partition to be the D partition and we will format it as NTFS as for the Windows 10 LTSC Enterprise it's a very good and recommended uh, operating system I prefer it for production environment because uh, it doesn't contain the Cortana it doesn't contain uh, the Edge it doesn't contain uh, the Windows Store uh, it only accepts security updates so it doesn't uh, accept feature updates and this is one of the biggest problems because the feature updates of Microsoft have a lot of problems here we have two uh, users we will uh, log uh, with them on the virtual machine or the uh, PC that will join the domain one is Bill Gates which is K Gates he is an IT personnel and then we have Elon Musk which is a normal or an advanced user but he is not an IT so we will test and see both of these users to see the different environments that they have and we'll see what is open for Bill Gates and what is open for Elon Musk from the Windows environment here I am just resetting the password for both of them so we can test and see what uh, the environment or Windows environment that will appear for Bill Gates and the one that will appear for Elon Musk so here we have both we have reset for Bill Gates and for Elon Musk we have Jeff Bezos first we will only uh, work with Bill Gates and Elon Musk so uh, let's see here now we are uh, installing it will take a little bit of time and then you can see that we will reset the password for Elon Musk so we'll use two users one Bill Gates and one for Elon Musk to test every one of them and see the different uh, permissions and the different options that will appear for, for, for both of them one is an IT and one is a regular user or an advanced user okay so let's say he's not a regular user but he's an advanced user so you will see the different options or differences between both of them we'll see the environment that they work on what is enabled and disabled for both of them from the Windows environment and here we can see that uh, we'll go to the Windows installation and still we are 151 percent and then here it is asking for the region which is United States you can choose your country and then we will ask to install a second keyboard layout we will not do this because the Active Directory login script will do it so still we are working with it and then we will use only the US keyboard and then we will not install an additional keyboard layout 
because as I said before this will be done by using the Active Directory login script so it will take a little bit of time and then you can see that there is different notifications we have some important setup to do this is different okay from the things that I regularly see now let's see what's new for from Windows and then at the end it will log in at the end okay as I said before there is a default user called administrator we need to change it from administrator to any other name and to give it a strong password okay and disable it completely and use a user that have the same privileges of the administrator okay so this is I said before it is the best practice and I have said that this is to guarantee that the hackers will not uh, know your password because most of the hackers know that there is a default username in, on Windows called administrator and most of us uh, don't give it a strong password he will tell him uh, don't enjoy uh, domain instead because you can log into the machine using your Outlook or your email account so you have two types of uh, login you can log in using your uh, email account or uh, using a local account so this is in our uh, scenario we will, will use a domain logged in machine and then here this is the second or here is asking us to create a second user this will be the second administrator okay so in Windows 10 he disables the administrator by default for you so he, he will do this step so you need to change only the the name of the administrator to any other thing and then this will be the second administrator or the second local administrator so this is why next I will give it a strong password and then next give it a password Okay, and then next then he will ask three questions and you give him a certain answer if you uh, don't remember your password you will ask these questions that you know uh, previously their answers if you provide the answer he will give you your password so he if you don't remember your password he will give you three questions you already know their answer provide the answer he will provide you with the password here is something you need to disable just a moment guys so let's continue guys now we will uh, close some options in the windows okay all of these are uh, not a secure not it is not secure to open them because some of them will uh, identify your location so this is not recommended in a production environment and some of them will send data to third party or it will send data to Microsoft which uh, we don't know if it is a personal data or mostly it's diagnostic data and something to improve the Windows experience but uh, it's preferable to be uh, to be closed okay and something called advertising ID so we don't need this to be in a production environment this to advertise uh, and working I think with the uh, advertising or something so we need to close all of these because they are uh, you will expose your PC uh, privacy out to the internet so we close all of this as a best practice also okay this is to harden it to harden the Windows 10 environment okay find my device all of these are uh, options to uh, send the data or expose uh, some information about your PC now we will not enable Cortana so here uh, I will not enable Cortana because uh, also it is noticeable that uh, Cortana takes a lot of RAM so uh, I don't need it to be activated anyway okay and I don't uh, see any uh, function of it or to be used in a production environment okay so it is best practice to not to enable Cortana and by the way uh, the Windows 10 LTSC uh, operating system doesn't contain the Cortana okay so this is one of the benefits okay so here we can see that you are allowed to get to the internet so 
this means or you got an IP address so this means that you got an IP address and then we need to install the VMware tools this is the uh, first thing to do when you install any operating system on a virtual uh, machine in the VM Workstation Pro environment so we'll install the uh, the VMware tools on the machine and then we will change uh, change its name to reflect the PC in the Active Directory which is NRVCBR01 and it was pre-staged pre already so it will go to the folder of nerves under brain so it will be pre-staged in a certain folder so we will do this as we can see here uh, we need to change the name and then to uh, make this PC join the domain okay so you will open this and then we will begin installation of the uh, uh, VM VMware tools okay so here we will go to this PC and then install the VMware tools okay here you go this is the VMware tools as I said before it is very important because it contains a lot of uh, things or it installs a lot of things to uh, increase the uh, conductivity or to share the conductivity between the host and the guest and to install drivers to uh, to install certain drivers like the graphic uh, or the video driver the mouse and a lot of things so we need to install it here we can see that we install VMware tools So it is installing the VMware tools, we think we can get it real quickly here. So here we will install it as complete, or we will completely install all of the tools of the VMware. So I think we can pass it also here. So now we have installed the VMware tools and then we will tell him rename this PC and change the name of the PC. Okay, so we need to change the name of the PC, okay. And RCBR01, okay, so we will change the name of the PC okay restart okay so we restart the PC after changing the name and then here we will encounter a problem when we uh, go and log in okay let me see here so if we go and try to uh, go to the domain so we will change and then we will tell him change or go to the domain here we will encounter a problem so here I am joining the domain but here we will see there will be a problem this problem appears because uh, let me show you first what is the problem here when we try to join the domain he will not see the domain okay or he will say there is an error okay let me show you all first uh, the error that will appear so here there is an error he can't join the domain because he can't see the domain 
so there is a problem we need to go first and check if you go to uh, here the, we can see that the additional domain controller is running and the primary domain controller is running so both domains are running so we need to check if the IP address or the PC can see both domains so we need to go to CMD okay and then type IP IP config to see the IP address of this machine and to see the IP address of the domains so here we can see for example that uh, the DNS servers are correct so he can see both domain controllers and he got an IP address and he can see the default gateway so everything seems to be perfect but wha what was the problem the problem that I am running three virtual machines and they are all taking a lot of RAM and a lot of processes okay so what happened that the VM Workstation Pro when he find some difficulty in uh, working with the virtual machines he restarted the virtual machine automatically so what happened that he restarted the primary domain controller okay so the machine was not able to join the domain someone tell me so there is the additional domain controller no it doesn't it's, it needs to have the primary domain controller which is the main server so if the primary domain controller is not available he will not be able to access uh, the uh, or to join the domain I will show you all what happened so if we go a little bit further here and I show you all some setting here so if we go here for example here I am trying what I do I'm trying to ping this server so it's saying destination host unreachable and I can ping the additional domain controller but I can't reach the primary domain controller mm. So let's continue guys, here we can see that we can't reach the primary domain controller So we are pinging by the name, I can't get it So if you ping after that by the IP address which is 192.168.1.10 We will not be able to reach it, so let's see here If we ping uh, the primary domain controller, we can't reach it So there is a problem with this And actually if we go further, so if I go further here If you go further further okay and then we go again so let's go there again so still we have the problem but if we try to ping here we can see that we were able to reach here after a moment when we try to ping the domain controller we can able the primary domain controller we can able to reach it so after that we will able to join the domain so what we will do in the upcoming video we will connect and try to join the primary domain controller so the problem was that the vm workstation pro restarted the primary domain controller without my knowledge so it was down so this was the problem why i was, was not able to join the domain so this is the end of our video hope this video was informative for you all and like thank you all for viewing thank you so much hmm? so hope this video is informative to you all and like thank you all for viewing thank you so much